Good morning, everyone. There's an interesting storyline in the first reading that we don't hear about for the readings of the Mass today. In the first reading, we hear that John left them and returned to Jerusalem. So in the first reading, they're going on an apostolic journey, and they're going place to place, town to town, doing all sorts of stuff. And at some point, John, also known as Mark, so John Mark, we'll call him, leaves the other disciples in the middle of this apostolic journey. He steps aside and returns to Jerusalem. And we can only imagine how heavily this event would have weighed on the disciples who remained on that journey. So much so that later, when they were preparing for a second apostolic journey, just like this first one, St. Paul argues that it's best not to take with them someone who had withdrawn from the journey, the same journey we hear about today. And so St. Paul is on one side of this issue. He's like, no, we should not take John Mark because, you know, he left halfway last time. Why are we going to, like, give him that time and opportunity to leave halfway again? This became such a divisive point that Paul and Barnabas started arguing about this. Barnabas was like, yeah, you should take him again. Like, let's give him another chance. This is not, this is God's will. This, he's working through him. Why are we arguing about this? And Paul and Barnabas were close friends through this, both staunch promoters of the faith, and they parted ways. And them parting ways, we can only imagine how much division this would have caused in the church at that time. We see something similar within the church today, too. There's a lot of anger, division, and animosity. But the story here is not done, done yet. We know St. Paul did not want to take John Mark on the second journey. But despite everything, Paul, being a man of immense heart and a fervent apostle who sacrificed himself to the utmost for his brothers, did not make a definitive judgment on John Mark. Instead, years later, we find John Mark described as one of St. Paul's closest friends and a deep source of consolation for him. My brothers and sisters, if these two men back 2,000 years ago within the church, staunchly divided, very much against each other, if they can reconcile, if they can cross cross the aisle to the other side and reach out and help that other person, be a source of consolation, to be a friend to them, even though they disagree ve vehemently on various issues, so can we. They become a model for us, for our way of moving about in this world, in this divided world. We can learn from them, and we have to. We have to be able to reach across the aisle to the other side with people we disagree with on various issues. The world says, no, they're wrong, we need to stay away from them. Christ says, no, we have to care for them, we have to love them, they are our neighbors. So it's on us to reach across. And I know at times I, I keep getting people coming up to me like, but Father, why do I have to do it? Why me? Why do I have to be the one that encourages and goes across the aisle to help and bring them to the center to like hold hands and, and become friends? Why is that my job? It's simple. You are a follower of Christ. Who else's job is it going to be? 